Hello and welcome to this case study all about Worthing. This is for the AQA Geography um, course and um, here we're going to be looking at what is happening in Worthing. I'm Mr Rogers and I hope that this is useful. Do feel free to pause and go back to the class activities where you need to. Now, it's a very strange time we find ourselves in at the moment. Uh, and what I would say is that, um, you know, I've been out for my daily exercise and looking after the dog and all of this has been filmed um, and photographs taken within the government um, COVID-19 guidance. So please don't go out there. Make sure you stay home and stay safe. Um, I've always made sure I've stayed well away of um, other users of the beach and I live literally uh, just a street behind the beach and I thought this would be really useful for you actually to see what is going on. Um, and I'm sure that we will be back in school very, very soon um, and this is a real dream area of geography when it comes up on the question. And do remember you're going to need to know your geomorphological processes, your weathering processes, your longshore drift before you go any further. So pause now if you need to revise. Now all of geography is linked together and first of all we've got to think about in Worthing why protect the coast and also what strategy is going to be used and under which policy. Now within Worthing there's a definite hold the line strategy and that's for a number of reasons. First of all we've got the economic activities. Now you might not think it but Worthing is a tourist hotspot remembering that day tripping um, is uh, a tourist activity. It doesn't have to be coming down for a long time. However there are coach loads of people who come down here and it's a very important recreational space as well. Worthing is also a really important residential area and this view down west toward Littlehampton along Worthing Prom, all of those buildings you see on your right hand side are mainly residential flats and they are high end residential and behind there is lots more residential. Yes there's a mixture and there's some uh, hotels, there's some pubs, there's some bars, there's some restaurants, however it's mainly here again for social, recreational and what we've got here is what's important to keep. So in other words, there is more harm to be lost. And just behind the pier, we have got access into the main road, which goes uh, east to west across um, Worthing, connecting Worthing to Brighton and to Littlehampton. And most importantly as well, we've got those high street brands and we've got a really vibrant high street and this is just behind. This all gives reason for that hold the line policy to be taken. I would pause here and just make some notes. Why does Worthing have a hold the line policy? Hopefully you've listed a whole load of social and economic reasons. One of those being the main road, the A259. And remember to include that clear detail. Include the specific detail to Worthing because geography happens in a place. Now we know the strategy, we can think about the individual techniques that are used. And here, we're again linking up to those typical conditions that Worthing experiences, both in terms of geomorphic processes and the waves, etc. So this is a picture, you should be able to identify the types of waves and make a few notes of what the typical conditions found in Worthing are because those determine the strategies to be used. Here we are on a socially distance run and um, as you can see, to make sure we're socially distanced I'm in the sea and I'm here with my son and the dog is somewhere. We're doing um, a little thing for scouts. But this is what we need in terms of um, the best sea defence. So it's low tide now. And uh, when I spin around, we've got a big beach. And the beach absorbs wave energy. 
hopefully you all know what this type of wave is and you can identify it and tell um, me what it is. And this sort of wave is what normally affects this stretch of coastline. And so this coastline is very much affected by the processes of longshore drift and deposition. You can see I'm away from everybody, keeping nice and safe. And what you can see in front is a mixture of hard and soft engineering. So you can see the groins and those big bad boys are put in there uh, many years ago. But also you can see how raised up the beach is. And the beach has been raised by people to manage the high value economic land behind. And you can see the land is uh, all along here residential. And if we scan down, we've got the high value commercial um, land there. So this is called holding the line. And the sea defences in place here are groins and then beach recharge and reshaping. So the beaches are made large. And the way that works is, is that when there are destructive waves, when there is powerful storms, the large beach absorbs the wave energy before it gets too far. And it also protects the land behind from coastal flooding. And in the usual place where there's nice constructive waves, where there's longshore drift happening, and remember Little Hampton is this way, Brighton is this way. And so what you can see are groins. And so groins don't stop longshore drift. And this is really important. But remember back, they trap beach material. Worthing Beach is a little bit, um, a little bit feisty today. When it comes to coastal management, there is a number of options available to organisations such as the Environment Agency and the local authority. And remember, someone is always responsible for making the decisions. They often are in response to the economic value of the land and in Worthing, uh, it's high value, where I am now, and so therefore worth spending loads of money to be able to hold the line. And so the first overall strategy is holding the line. That is keeping the coastline exactly where it is right now, or pretty close. So within Worthing, as a recap, we've got hard engineering of groins, we've got a big embankment that raises the profile and the height of the beach. We've also got the softer engineering, which is the beach recharge. And the beaches have been reshaped completely over the past couple of days by big heavy machinery. Now that's got to be done every single year. And so therefore it's quite a lot of money in the long term. In addition, within Worthing we've got some hard sea walls and rock armour. So we can hold the line as we do in Worthing. Just east of the town centre here, just east of the, of the pier, and as you can see behind me, um, there's quite a significant bit of rock armour here, and behind that is um, a significant sea wall. And it's only this little patch of the Worthing Seafront that is like this, and there's a good reason for this, and that's because this area is really hit by those destructive waves in particular, and this is where the fetch of the waves is the furthest and the longest and there's also nothing really to break those waves before they get to here. The beach here is actually uh, very narrow and therefore the strength and the power and the energy of those waves aren't dissipated before they hit. And so this is where um, the limited funds that the environment agency have, they design these coastal management plans really carefully. The hold the line policy in Worthing is a combination of strategies. We've got groins and here we have beach recharge happening just this week. Now, th this is in combination with the groins, in combination with sea walls and other strategies. Now, of course, Worthing is also on a coastal floodplain. Not much of it is very high above sea level. On the left hand side of this image, you can see that the prom in Worthing is raised up. And you can see this at Littlehampton as well. And that's been done purposefully. 
it's much cheaper than using and building a seawall right the way along the Worthing seafront. That would cost a lot of money. The problem, of course, is that this is built up with shingle and is porous and technically the water can get through there. However, this is a really effective way of protecting against coastal flooding. And this is particularly important when we have big Atlantic storms coincide with high winds and high tides. With all of this engineering, there are, of course, disadvantages. And groins in particular, and the ones in Worthing have been at there since the, uh, the sort of 50s and 60s, they really need a lot of maintenance. And here you can see my son crawling through um, the groins. Now, in some places in Worthing, uh, the wooden groins are starting to be replaced with rock groins. And as you walk along the Worthing coast, exactly the same in Little Hampton, you will see that there are parts of the groin that have to be repaired. As we know, the coast is a really dynamic system. And here is a view looking west toward the pier and toward Little Hampton. And you can see the new economic activity and new residential towers going in place. And here you can see another section of big sea wall and really a lot of the engineering is buried and this is to make sure it's not too ugly and it's also um, a reason to think very carefully about what is used because that sea wall there on the right um, prevents access to the beach and so if the beach is important for economic activity of course it is important that a sea wall isn't used. In that photograph, you can also see where some rock armour has been used to shore up some broken parts of the groin.